Japan's weather is a fascinating mix. Heavy snow blankets the winters, while summer brings beautiful sunny days. This unique combination offers a wonderful lifestyle, but also year-round challenges with moisture. Rain and summer humidity create ideal conditions for mold and termites, and melting snow in winter adds even more ground moisture, particularly in older homes. Historically, Japanese homes managed moisture with natural ventilation and exposed soil beneath floorboards. While effective at the time, these designs now face difficulties in dealing with modern environmental conditions. Retrofitting with solutions like vapor barriers introduced globally in the mid-20th century have become crucial. These barriers prevent moisture diffusion, protecting against mold, termites, and structural damage while extending a home's lifespan. In today's video, I'll show you what I did in my process for installing a vapor barrier and show how it can help safeguard your home against Japan's snowy winters, humid summers, and everything in between. Let's get started. Happy travels. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who's bought my travel and property guides and shouted me a coffee recently. If you're interested in getting a copy or if you want to shout me a coffee, I'll drop the links in the description. Also, I've just launched my branding, Orija. Stay tuned for more. Don't forget to like and subscribe for property, lifestyle, and unique Japan adventures. Thank you for your support. Today, I'm installing a vapor barrier under the house. Now, recently I installed insulation under the house, under the floorboards. I used the BATS insulation. I found that because I have soil under the house, directly under the house, and this is common for Japanese houses, I have had some condensation buildup underneath that BATS insulation. And because of this, I need to have a vapor barrier on the ground. So the, that bat insulation, that fiberglass insulation, isn't full of water. What is a vapor barrier? It's pretty simple. So I have it right here, and it's basically just this big plastic sheet that I will lay out on the floor and on the walls. And anywhere that comes up and out of that soil on the floor to protect it from moisture. I'll be overlapping that plastic and then taping the joints. And over the top of the plastic sheet, this is zeolite rock. It's a natural rock that will be absorbing the moisture. This is a common practice in Japan, and it'll look something like this in the end. So Japan is super humid, and this is the reading that I'm getting inside the house. 83% humidity. It is really humid here in Japan. Having a vapor barrier on the floor level should reduce the amount of moisture, the humidity, in the air. I've already got that, that bats insulation that is supposed to prevent some of that. So one side of the insulation on that fiberglass insulation, it is um, sheeted insulation. I recently had a guy who specializes in vapor barriers, in soils, in termites, come out and do a quick inspection of what's needed in the house. And he's recommended my next step will be a vapor barrier. So that's what I'm putting down. So he quoted me for a 400,000 yen job, which is roughly two and a half thousand dollars. So I'll be doing this myself. So that's what I'm doing today. This here is the opening on my floor. And I've been running a fan under here all day, just laid it down flat there. And I'm doing this section. You can see here, I've got the light set up that there is some kind of dampness there. It's, it's soil, it's, it's a ground here. So of course it's gonna be kind of damp. I don't need anything very special for this job. It's just the tape, it's the vapor barrier and the box cutter. I'm taking down one of these moisture readers with me just to check what it's gonna be like, what it's like under there in these kind of usual conditions to see what moisture I'm getting. So I'll put that down there first and see what that looks like. Welcome down to the crawl space. This area is super tight. It is very low. Right now I have a, an okay airflow, so I'm not too worried about masking up or too much safety equipment. I am right next to the entrance of the floor here. And the first thing I'm doing, what you're watching right now, is I'm using that plastic to 
start to wrap around the protrusions in the floor. The first thing I started was with those that wood that's coming out of the piers, out of the floor, and then I start cutting for the floor itself. And this has to go up the wall a little bit. So I'm trying to measure this correctly and then bring this across. And remember that I'm overlapping this. The goal here is to stop that ground moisture evaporating and then coming up into the house. So if you can imagine that evaporation is or has been forever until now, just been evaporating from the ground, from the soil, and going up to the floorboards. That becomes a problem for the house, as with that moisture that hits the floorboards, it will start to create a, a condensation on the bottom of the floorboards and anywhere on those structural elements and the joists under the floor. You'll start to get some level of water buildup, which will lead to mold, that damp issue, which did exist under the house. Before I did any of this, I made sure when I first did that insulation above my head that you can see there, I washed all of that down and you would have seen that in my original video. If you watched that insulation video, what I did under the floor boards in the joists there, you'll see how I washed that down there to make sure that there was no mold. So this was a clean space when I was under here. Now it's starting to take shape and I'm just filling in some of those final gaps in this area. This has been a tricky job to do. It is hot. Remember that this is humid under here. And I'm starting to look a bit filthy here with my clothes. And I'll make a change to this soon because I did, I did get really dirty under here. So while the space is clean, and I did clear this out as well to make sure that nothing sharp was sticking up to cut through this. I really carefully checked because I didn't want anything to pierce this plastic, but this is strong plastic. It is made for this job. It's not like regular pr plastic. It is it's designed for this purpose as a vapor barrier. But you can see how tight this space is to work in. And once that plastic was down, I was able to slide easier across it. It actually became much easier to work in. Just those final tapings. And I used a lot of tape under here. So far, I had managed to already do that insulation above my head. Then I basically wrapped the floor like a Christmas present and taped it down. 
it it was tricky. It was really tricky. But this job here, this one was probably the worst. I had to bring in those 10 kilogram bags of that rock, that zeolite, more or less one by one and take them around the floor all the way to the back. This is about 50 meters squared of floor space and way up the back there where I'm at now, that's the worst part of the floor. That's about two foot or roughly 60 centimeters high, probably a little bit less in the, in the lowest spots, not much more than one and a half feet. And this is where I was dressed for the occasion to slide around to get those rocks way up to the back. The back there, I had 50 bags to put up there. And this is what I looked like at the end of the day. Eight hours later, this was an eight hour job. Thank you for watching another one of my videos. Like my video, follow along and subscribe. If you'd like to support me even further, you could buy me a coffee on Ko-Fi. I love coffee. Otherwise, you could also get a copy of my guide and map. I really appreciate your support. Happy travels.